everyone welcome friends today i'm going to be introducing to you the different type of sands we use in construction how to identify them and where they should be best used all right you know using the wrong sand in the wrong place may be the tiniest but yet the enormous mistake you'll be making in a project the substructure and superstructure of bridges residential and commercial buildings are functions of aggregates an aggregate itself is a function of sand so using the wrong type of sand for a particular job with a correct mix ratio is even more disastrous than using a wrong mix ratio with the correct type of sand. This is why it is essential for a structural engineer to have a vivid knowledge about the different type of sand and where they should be best applied. Sand can be divided into two. We have the natural sand and we have the manufactured sand. A sand that is extracted from its deposit, be it river, peat or beach is referred to as natural sand. If a rock or a stone is crushed into granular particles by machine in a factory, it is referred to as manufactured sand or simply you call it M sand. Due to the scarcity or the depletion of natural sand which is as a result of uh, environmental degradation, there is a need for M sand. Um, my emphasis will be on how do we identify sand A from sand B and what kind of job should we use sand x for okay so the identification is going to be done by two methods one is the eye inspection method here we will just check the color of the sand we observe how big the grains are and we check the physical impurities the impurities that we can see with our eyes you know not like silt you can't see silt with your eyes but physical impurities like white particles some black particles those are the physical impurities we check for that and the second method is the hand inspection. Here we will feel the texture to see how rough or smooth um, the sand is. And also we check the cohesiveness by squeezing the sand to form a ball. However, the color of a particular sand may vary due to the amount of iron oxide present in it. For every red colored sand, the amount of iron oxide is I. In Nigeria, for example, the color of sand A May be brownish in Ogun state and that same sand A will be reddish in Delta state. This all depends on the level of iron oxide present in their source. So color is not a constant parameter to judge what type of sand but parameters like texture, particle size or the size of grain and the cohesiveness of sand A in Ogun state will be the same or let me say similar to another sand A in Delta state. The first sand I have here is sharp sand. Sharp sand is also called coarse sand or peat sand. It is called peat sand because it is extracted from peat, which is about 1 to 1.2 meters below the ground in inland. Looking at it, there are usually white particles on it. Okay, You can see how big the grains are. They are big and their texture is rough. When you squeeze it up to form a ball, it doesn't form well, which means it is not so cohesive. And when you pour it away, there will be little particles left on your hand. Yeah, there will be little um, particles left on your hand since it is not cohesive. It won't stick to your hand. It's usually, uh, it's, it won't stick to your hand and it's usually have dust. Yeah, it is dusty in nature. Sharp sand is used in aspect of the building where much strength is required. You need to know that the bigger the grain of any aggregate, the higher the strength it possesses. Imagine a man that is breaking a stone. It will take him more effort to break a big fragment of stone than a small fragment of stone. All right? This is why boulders are used in road construction instead of cobbles. Sharp sand is used in concrete mixing. We use it in block manufacturing. You can use it for bonding your bricks and blocks. It can also be used in laying your ties and interlock bricks. Um, the second is plaster sand. Plaster sand is also called river sand. This sand is much more finer than sharp sand. That is, its granular particles are closely packed. They have smaller particles and they are closely packed. It has a very smooth texture. When you rub it on your hand, it is very smooth. It can't hurt you. And it is very cohesive in nature. As you can see, you can form it into a ball 
to just be forming very cohesive yeah as it sounds plaster sound it is used for plastering the internal walls rendering the external wall and screening the floor plaster sound is extracted from the banks or the beds of muddy rivers the rivers are usually muddy the third type of sand is um, jointing sand jointing sand is also called beach sand a lot of people mix this kind of sand with sharp sand is the jointing sand looks more like sharp sand but it is very clean it doesn't have dust like sharp sand because it is usually collected from beach and the beach would have washed it already it is also called washed sharp sand or simply you call it washed sand it is less coarse than sharp sand and it is not coercive too it is used for jointing or bonding your bricks uh, and your blocks when you're laying them it is used in aspects where sharp sand are used as i've said it is similar to sharp sand so any aspect you can use your sharp sand you can also use your joint in sand and the fourth type of sand i have here is the red building sand this red building sand is used as a base aggregate you can use it for filling and leveling the surface it can be used as a base for landscaping um, this sand is as fine as plaster sand and it has a very smooth texture and it's very cohesive in nature as you can see it can form a ball it can form a ball when you squeeze it to form a ball it forms really well that means it's what it is cohesive apart from using it as a base aggregate it can be used for plastering you can also use it for bonding your bricks and blocks especially the red bricks you know it is a red sand so when you use red sand to bond a red brick there will be um, coherence it can be used as a bedding for your pond liner too the fifth sand i have here is laterite you see laterite can be grouped under rock and you can also group it under sand it has a reddish color due to the high content of iron oxide in it its grains are big in fact some can be as big as a boulder <laughs> and it is used as a base material for concrete elements concrete element like german floor um the base for blinding your foundation and the likes you understand you can use that as hard core material it can be used for sand filling and back filling purposes as well and it is very coarse and rocky in nature as i've said earlier that the more coarse an aggregate is the more strength it possesses laterite is as well used in root construction because of its strength and coarseness the sixth sand i have here is the m sand or um, the manufactured sand it is also called crushed sand sand is not a renewable material and it can be depleted in the deposits this is why we have to manufacture our own sand and it can be used in place of other natural sands their particle can be controlled that is it can be big or small depending on how you want it you can crush it as fine as possible they are used for concrete mixing you can use it for manufacturing your block and then it can be used to bond your bricks and your blocks their texture is mostly rough in nature so, you know i told you it can be controlled but most time it is usually rough m sand is well used because of its vast advantages which include absence of silt m sand do not have silt and its quality can be controlled it is controllable and it is versatile you can use it for any purpose you just have to control the quality to suit what you need it for all right so for the cohesiveness you, there are some admixtures you can add some admixtures to it to to make it to be cohesive and that way you can use it for plastering you can just control the quality you understand so this is all i've got for today thanks for watching to the end and don't forget to like and subscribe to my youtube channel and then you just click the red bell icon to get notification whenever i post a new video